Ah, we here. Big fish shit. Ooh, ooh. Welcome to the podcast. Hope y'all enjoy it. Hope y'all learn something. And most importantly, we hope y'all elevate. Let's get uh-huh. it. Big fish, hit a big lick. We gon' bet it right back and hit a big flip. We been up for a minute and we still lit. Get them cats going top, but we don't feel shit. We just giving y'all gems y'all can live with. Elevate your mind, never mind all the bullshit. Finna talk about stocks, we ain't worry about ops. First get the bread up, then buy back the whole block. Ten toes down, we ain't never gonna stop. I'm a man of my word, I ain't never gonna flop. If I said it, then I meant it. Real ones gonna respect it, and it's still OG. It's in me, I represent it. Ew, ew. All right, big fish shit right to it. Matter of fact, not right to it. Um, this is going to be a little bit of a different type of, not necessarily podcast, but just a different type of OG talk. All right, big fish talk. Back to the big fish conversations. And it's something that has always been discussed especially in a lot of my posts um with the intensity that I deliver um a lot of the things that I'm saying in and it came about because I had a hashtag that said I hate niggas let me be very clear I hate niggas everything that a nigga represents is what's wrong with our community. It's what's detrimental to our community. There's nothing positive about a nigga. When we think about the culture, we have a nigga culture. Your culture determines the success of your people, right? Based on your culture, your standards, your rituals, your education level, your resources, these things all are impacted or impact your culture, correct? Or are shaped by in some way. There's a reason why we're losing. There is a reason why we're losing. And I don't know if it's that we just don't understand that we're losing or if we actually believe that this is the best that we can do. Or maybe a bunch of other reasons that aren't coming to my head that I just can't subscribe to because I'm not a victim. I don't live in, I don't care if shit is fair. I don't care if it's even. I don't believe in level playing fields. To me, that's the goofiest shit I've ever heard. People, competitors compete for advantages. Competitors compete to have a competitive advantage over their opposition, period. People work hard. Other cultures, Asian, Jewish, Arab, Indian, Mexican, really across the board. Other cultures work extremely hard to give not only themselves, but their future generations a competitive advantage over other generations of people from different backgrounds. This world is a competition whether we like it or not. So whether you like capitalism, whether you like competition, it is what it is. So I want to get back to the initial point that I was you know, brought about, which was when I said I hate niggas, why is it that... Why is it that people decided to have an issue with that and feel that it's too strong? But it's not too strong for our little kids to listen to on the radio. It's not too strong when you turn on a black rapper and 90% of them are talking about running down on an op, killing an op. But all the ops look like us. All the ops are us. They just live across the street. They just live around the corner. So why is it an issue when I say 
I hate niggas as in I hate all the negative shit. Because I separate the two. A black person, totally different than a nigga. Black people don't like niggas. An honorable, righteous black person does not like niggas. It's ignorant shit that, like I said, is extremely detrimental to our community. It's like if somebody walked into a room and said, yo, um, yeah, we're just here to pick up the two Asian guys or the two Asian girls. I'm not thinking that they're talking about me. I'm not thinking that they're talking about me. Now, I can understand in a situation where if it's a different culture coming in like, yo, where them niggas at? Then whether I identify as a nigga or not, I'm, I'm offended maybe. In a, it, maybe. Definitely. <laughs> it's going to be a problem. However, when we're discussing it between each other, we need to be real. We need to be very particular in what we hate and not necessarily classify and definitely not classify that as hate speech, saying that you hate something that's detrimental to our community. It's like saying I hate people who rape, I hate rapists or I hate unhealthy food. I hate cancer. Would, would, would anybody ever say, you, you shouldn't hate cancer? Why would you hate cancer? Because it destroys. Because it kills our people. And that's what niggas do. They destroy. They kill our people. And this nigga mentality that we allow to continuously go on as adults, it doesn't even impact us the most. It impacts our, our, our kids, the future generation, the next generation that we're supposed to be leading. They're supposed to be leaning, to, leaning on us for advice and guidance. But instead, we're condoning a nigga culture that puts their lives at risk. So it's funny when people say, you shouldn't say that you hate niggas. All the music does. But why do you feel the need to call little old me out, right? Little old me. For simply saying that I hate certain things. That have led to the oppressed mind. The oppressed minds of our people. Us being niggas, us being ignorant, us lacking knowledge, us not caring about the right things, all nigga shit. See, nigga, I, I always remember my dad telling me that my grandmother used to tell him before he left the house, mind yourself, don't act like a nigga. I don't care. It, it, Nigga shit, there's nothing endearing about it. Nigga shit is nigga shit. It's still nigga shit. But to get back to the initial point, I didn't even want to focus on the nigga word. I wanted to focus on the hate word. I think that our society has completely flipped our brain. And how we should think upside down and backwards. Wrong. Hate is important. Hate is powerful. Hate is one of the most important tools that we can use to elevate, to fix our problems. Or just to fix our problems on a surface level. Hate makes people change not love not love 
Love in most cases makes you stay in a situation that you probably shouldn't be in. Love makes you keep eating that bullshit food that you know you shouldn't be eating. But I love the fr- I love the fries. I love that food. No, no, no. When you start hating the way you look, hating the way that your health is by eating bullshit, by not exercising. When when you start to hate that part of you, then you'll change it. When we when we start to hate losing, then we'll do what's necessary to 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 win. Hate changes things. And if you really if we really love ourselves. Then there's got to be a. An equal opposite. Or not even equal, a stronger opposite, I would argue. If you love yourself, you should hate. Detrimental things to yourself, right? If you love your people, you should hate all the things that destroy your people. But if you're just running around, I get it. Yeah, we want to be in this world where we oh, everybody's happy. It's all about love. Protect your pee, protect your. What are the results? So let's let's think about the results. When I, I I study winners a lot. I study Tom Brady. I study Floyd Mayweather. I study people winning in real life. Say real life, right? Life outside of sports. I study winners. I study how how Trump became the president. How did he win with no experience? How did he win? I want to know. Y'all care about, oh, he's an asshole. I'm more concerned with like, yo, how did he win? I need to learn something. I study how people are able to win. I remember, I believe it was Michael Jordan, but I've heard it from a lot of athletes. Ask, go ask your, the most competitive people that you know, the people that win the most. Ask them whether they love winning, whether that energy is stronger, or whether they hate winning. I'm sorry. Got excited about this one. Ask them whether they hate losing more than they love winning. Ask the people that are most successful in your life, the winners, the people that compete at a high level the go-getters if they love winning more than they hate losing i guarantee you the majority of them will say that they hate losing more than they love winning because the hate fuels them loving winning a lot of people love winning i guess but it doesn't keep you at the top it's the fact that you hate losing You hate losing so much, you'll do any and everything to never, ever put yourself in a disadvantaged position. Hate changes things. You see, that's why when I remember Malcolm X, when I used to study Malcolm a lot, they used to always try to say, they do this with a lot of people, he's spewing hate speech. And he put it in a much more eloquent, eloquent way than I can. That this is not hate speech. This is love speech. This is the love for my people. You're seeing it as hate because you're the type you come from a standpoint that's trying to destroy and oppress my people. So therefore, my love for my people forces me to hate everything that destroys my people. So if you're on the side that's trying to destroy my people, yes, you'll, you'll say goofy shit like I'm spewing hate speech. Maybe it is hate speech. But is it hate speech to say that you hate cancer? Is it hate speech to say that you hate AIDS? Is it hate speech to say that you hate COVID? If somebody said, I hate COVID, would you ever say, oh my God, you're spewing hate? No shit. I hate, I hate that stuff. It's destructive to our community. 
But why do black people hold on to stuff that does destroy our community? Not only hold on to it, why do we protect the things that destroy our communities? But we claim we're all about love or you should be you should you should speak more on a love frequency, all this other stuff. No, you should speak more on a love frequency if that works for you. Because I haven't seen that. I've seen a lot of Barack's. You know, we've had the Barack Obamas. We had all this stuff. You know, we've had, we have all the pastors with the slick talking, the finessing, telling us what sounds good. Not all, but I'm just saying that's the that's the that's the culture of it, in my opinion. We get these Al Sharptons, all these other people, Michael Eric Dyson. They sound so nice when they speak. Um, they present it, package it, you know, in a, in a great package that looks good. But who cares? I care about results. Some of the, some of the coaches that I couldn't stand the most. I couldn't stand how they communicated with me. They got the most out of me. One in particular, my college coach, couldn't stand phony as hell. <laughs> Amazing coach, great football mind, and helped me in a lot of ways. I just can't even say he's phony. He was just he, not phony. That's the he knew he was phony. He was just politicking, um, but. He not only cared the most and did the most for me at the end of the day when I didn't even know, but he got the most out of me. See, when we get to a position where we really hate stuff, that's when we change. Until we hate something, until we hate our job, we're just complaining. We're just talking shit. But when you really hate it, I hate being here, then you start planning and taking practical steps, action, to change your situation. So I think we need more hate. I think we need more hate. If we claim that we love ourselves, if we claim that we love each other, I think we need more hate. Because how can you love the well-being of your people and not hate things that destroy it? And I understand that people say, well, you got to watch, you know, you putting that frequency, that hate frequency out. Well, imagine the confusion in the energy when you say that you love your people, but you also love the things that destroy your people. That's a confusing message to send, right? For the universe, they don't know what to bring back to you. But when I'm very clear on, Based on my love for my people, I hate this, I hate that, I hate that. All those things that are destroying my people, I hate them. Now, why may we not want to acknowledge the hate for certain things? Then we got the accountability that comes along with it. Withholding ourselves to a standard now that once I hate that, I, it's hard for me to indulge in it, right? puts a little standard puts a higher standard on us it comes with a higher level of responsibility and accountability that can be intimidating so the main takeaway or the main thought that I want to share with you all maybe to get on the top of your mind or somewhere in your mind just as you're going throughout the day think about the things that you truly hate. Think about what it would take for us to change some of the negative habits that we have. Maybe we should hate candy. Maybe we should hate Popeyes. Maybe we should hate different things that destroy our culture or have made our culture what it is. Maybe we should hate a lot of this music that just condones and promotes our 12-year-olds, 13-year-olds, 14-year-olds to feel like it's okay to represent their, their block that they rent on, that they rent their block, and go kill an op, a quote-unquote op, who looks just like them but grew up down the street. 
Maybe we should hate things that brainwash our kids. Maybe we should hate things that brainwash our women. Right, fellas? We're the leaders, right? We're the leaders, right? Black men? Talking specifically about black, black people right now, we're the leaders, right? Maybe we should hate things that are detrimental to ourselves. My laundry's done. <laughs> Maybe we should hate any and everything that does not push us towards positivity and winning and towards changing our culture for the better. Maybe we should hate that. Maybe we should teach the little homies to hate certain things that may even be in them. I got, I, there's stuff in me. There's urges in me that I hate. Right? Isn't that how everybody is? I'm not saying I hate myself. I'm saying that there's certain things if I love myself, if I think I got a God body, you feel me? If I really believe that, if I really know that, then anything not aligned with that, I despise, I hate. I got to get that out. Anything that's not aligned with, with me walking on my righteous path, me walking in my purpose, I'm very black and white with stuff. When things are black and white, not gray, that's when shit gets done. Is this good or bad? Is this positive or negative? Is this for a win or for a loss? Very simple and move accordingly. And then once we get to a different position, then we can have the privilege to play around with that gray area to where it's like, ah, you know, I worked out every day this year. Or I've been, I've been very consistent with my workout. I got my physique up. I got my health, my, my mind, everything. Maybe I can eat a little BS every now and then. See, that's the gray area, but, but we have to earn the gray area. Until we earn the gray area, we need to live in the black and white. And that's just hate or love, right? The yin and the yang, whatever it is, I don't know. Maybe I'm getting a little too deep for my own self, but that's what I live in, black and white. Is this good or is this bad? Period. And then with certain things, when it gets to a certain point, when we can afford to think, live, be in that gray space more often, then we do it, right? We're human. We're going to naturally not be perfect. But if we aim for, for black, you know, when we talk about black and white, if we aim for the black with the black and white, the worst case, you know, ah, man, I fell back into that gray for, for a little bit, but I got to get back to the black. But if we aim for the gray, now we fell back into the white space. So it's, if black's the goal space, you know, we, when we're thinking black and white, if black's the space where it's like, this is the, I'm achieving my goal, the yin and the yang, the black is the positive, then it's like shoot for the shoot for the what is it shoot for the moon if you miss you'll be amongst the stars I don't even know if that's the right saying If you try to get an A plus you you can fail and get an A you can fail your goal and get a B B plus but if your goal is to just pass you're probably not going to get an A you're probably going to be somewhere in that DC range or maybe even an F So and these are just my thoughts. These are just my thoughts. Based on what I've seen work for others. Based on my own individual experience, what's worked for me, what hasn't worked. But we're going to have to sacrifice a certain amount of our happiness, a certain amount of our comfort. Because the things that we're used to, they provide that comfort. The things that we're used to based on our culture. But if we have a shitty culture, a hateful culture, we have a hateful culture. The black culture hates black people. Black culture hates black people. 
Why do I say this? Look at the black culture. We're the most out of shape, unhealthy. We're the only ones running around singing anthems that glorify killing ourselves. We disrespect our women. We over-sexualize our women. We have no control based on a lack of leadership in our men. We're irresponsible. We're ignorant in a lot of, I'm talking about the culture, the overwhelming culture. It's not all black people. That's not all black people. However, the overwhelming majority of our culture is a negative, detrimental culture, which is why we lose in the game of life. Other cultures have designed their cultures to be conducive to winning. To creating generational success, wealth. Ours, I don't know, conducive to wanting to play ball, wanting to rap, get a lot of bitches. What is our culture? What does it consist of? And we're such a powerful group of people that in a lot of ways, our culture is probably the most beloved but not embraced i'm not sure if i'm using the right words people love our culture but they don't embrace it to the point where they make they live their lives based on our culture they just see it as entertainment we are actually silly enough and our leadership is is terrible enough to where our kids actually believe in our culture They believe like, yo, this is the right thing to do. While other cultures are like, yo, that's just entertainment. Even us, we can get older, listen to certain music and just say, ah, you know, I can separate the two. That's entertainment. I'm not really doing that goofy shit in real life. Yeah, well, our kids, they can't differentiate. So we have an obligation and responsibility to them to make sure that they're very clear on things. Black and white, no gray area. So I'll leave y'all with this. Hate it or love it, the under, nah. (laughs) Hate, love, to me they work, they work together. But see, we only focus on the love. We need to get a little bit more intentional with the things that we hate, the things that we despise, the things that we won't allow to enter our energy the things that we won't allow to shape our culture, the things that we won't allow to shape us. We need to be more intentional with the hate. I know we want to be loving, we want to be happy, but happiness is a privilege that more often than not, comes from people that hate negative things when your team hates losing you get the privilege of winning and enjoying the privilege the spoils of winning when you hate being out of shape unhealthy obese whatever it may be You change your eating habits. You change your exercise routines. You change these things. So therefore, you can live in the happiness and the privilege that comes along with hating that lifestyle and embracing the positive. So those are just my thoughts. I still, I hate negative shit. I hate I hate nigga shit. I hate nigga shit. I hate it. And more of us need to hate it. Because the only way that we're going to get rid of it, the only way that we're going to educate our youngins to be able to make more, make money off of music, but let's make it cool to make money off positive music that uplifts us, that doesn't 
destroy us and lead us to an oppressed, sad state. So I'll leave y'all with that. Big fish shit. Y'all see my new LED lights. <laughs> but yeah, just wanted to share those thoughts with y'all. Y'all have a good one. Ooh. Ah, we here. Big fish shit. Ooh, ooh. Welcome to the podcast. Hope y'all enjoy it. Hope y'all learn something. And most importantly, we hope y'all elevate. Let's get uh-huh. it. Big fish, hit a big lick. We gon' bet it right back and hit a big flip. We been up for a minute and we still lit. Get them cats going top, but we don't feel shit. We just giving y'all gems y'all can live with. Elevate your mind, never mind all the bullshit. Finna talk about stocks, we ain't worry about ops. First get the bread up and buy back the whole block. Ten toes down, we ain't never gonna stop. I'm a man of my word, I ain't never gonna flop. If I said it, then I meant it. Real ones gonna respect it, and it's still OG. It's in me, I'm represented.